Welcome to iLecture Online. Here's our second example of how to solve a problem in a quick and clever way. So let's read the problem together. Consider, and I need an R here, consider a hydrogen atom with its electron in the end orbital. An electromagnetic radiation, a photon, of wavelength 90 nanometers is used to ionize the atom. If the kinetic energy of the ejected electron is 10.4 electron volts, then the value of n is equal to question mark. And we're looking for an integer between 0 and 9. That's the type of problem it is. These problems require the value of n to be an integer between 0 and 9. And they give us that the Planck's constant times the speed of light is equal to 1,242 electron volts. So you don't need a calculator. No calculators allowed. All right. So quickly, let's draw a schematic and try to figure out what's happening. So we have a hydrogen atom which has a positive nucleus. We have a number of orbitals around that. And the electron is in one of them. We don't know which one. It's in the nth orbital. We need to know what n is. n could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We need to figure that out. A photon comes in where the wavelength is equal to 90 nanometers. It's supposedly, well, 90 nanometers, we know that's in the ultraviolet range, so that has a fair amount of energy, and it's supposed to be able to kick the electron out so that the electron has kinetic energy, as it is ejected, of 10 point, what is it, 10.4 electron volts. So that means that the photon has enough energy to ionize it out of the orbit that it's in, plus giving it an additional 10.4 electron volts. So, we know that the innermost orbit has a energy level of minus 13.6 electron volts. The next one is minus 3.4 electron volts and so forth. So we're able to calculate that. We know that the energy level is equal to minus 13.6 electron volts divided by the orbital squared. So we should know that. All right, let's find out what the energy is of the photon. So what's the strategy? We'll figure out what the energy is of the photon we then subtract from that the energy that's given to the electron kinetic energy, and then the difference will be the amount needed to get it out of the orbital. So the way we're thinking about it is this, that the energy of the photon, photon minus the kinetic energy that is given the electron as it leaves the atom is equal to the delta energy required to ionize it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to find the energy of the photon, subtract from that the kinetic energy that, it, that the electron has as it's ejected out of the atom, and the difference will be the amount of energy needed to ionize the atom from the orbit that it's in. The smaller this, the smaller this number, the higher the orbit will be in which it's in. So that's the strategy. Okay, energy of the photon. Of the photon, let's just write that down like that, is equal to H, Planck's constant times the frequency, which can be written as hc over lambda. Since they gave us hc and we're given lambda, lambda is right there, we can you go ahead and use that uh, form of the equation. So the energy of the photon is equal to, oh, wait, I'm missing something. It's per nanometer. That's right. They gave it to in electron volts per nanometer. So then we can go ahead and say h is 1,242 electron volts. Um, oh, times nanometer? Is it time nanometer? So times nanometer. I have to look it up. Le give me a second here. Um, yes, yes. It has to be times nanometer because when we divide by nanometers, the nanometers need to cancel. So times nanometer divided by the, the wavelength of the photon, which is 90 nanometers. So nanometers cancel out, we're left with electron volts. Now we have to divide this number by 90. So energy of the photon is equal to, so I go nine goes into 12 one time, that leaves me three. Uh, 34 divided by nine, that would be, um, let's see, 34 divided by nine would be three times, because three times nine is 27. 34 minus 27 is seven, add another two, 72 divided by 9, that is 8, so 13.8 electron volts. So you should be able to do that in your head or you should be able to quickly work it out on the side. So now that we know the energy of the photon, 
we can use this equation. We can say that 13.8 electron volts minus the kinetic energy, which is 10.4 electron volts, is equal to 3.4 electron volts. Now you might immediately recognize, ah, that is the second orbit, so therefore n equals 2, or if you don't remember, remember that, use the equation, you could say that the energy, 3.4 electron volts, is equal to, and it doesn't matter if it's negative or positive, we just take the magnitude of the energy needed, 13.6 electron volts divided by n squared. So you can see that if n is 2, this divided by 4 gives you that, so therefore n is equal to 2. And the answer is then n equals 2, so we're in the second orbital. That is the answer to the problem. How much time did I take? Well, from start to finish, almost seven minutes. Seven minutes. Of course, that includes yeah, explaining and lots of talking and all that. Uh, well, that's necessary to explain the problem, but again, you only have about three to five minutes to solve a problem like this. And so, yes, you do have to know certain things. It helps to know that the energy at the lowest level is minus 13.6 electron volts, that the energy of any orbital, E sub n, if you want to call it that, is equal to this equation, and the fact that a 90 nanometer photon comes in, you should be able to calculate the energy of that photon. They gave us hc in terms of nanometers and electron volts divided by 90. Quick calculation gives you the total energy of the photon. Subtract from that the kinetic energy. The difference is the energy required to ionize the atom. If it's 3.4 electron, electron volts, it must be in the second orbital. And that's how the problem is solved.